Hello, my name is Jason Miller, founder of Aspen Now Solutions, and we're about to unlock the power of ServiceNow. I'd like to start off by thanking all 2,232 subscribers in over 80 countries globally. If you believe in transferring knowledge to those who need it most, please click subscribe. Your user data will not be transferred to anyone outside of Aspen Now without your consent. Welcome back to the Reboot series. Today I'll be discussing the retroactive start condition contained in SLA definitions. Okay, so I've created four SLA definitions here. Actually, I'm going to refresh the list. And we'll see here that they're all taking place on the problem table. And just as a refresher, how do we get to our SLA table here, right? Because this doesn't have the nav or anything. So I'm going to pull up a new screen. And we can do it two ways. I type in la def, and that should bring up our SLAs. Or another thing you can do is if you know the names of the tables, you can do contract underscore SLA dot caps. If you do all caps list, then it's going to bring it into a new window. All right. So now that we're here, I'm going to sort on the table. Uh, let's do a show matching on the problem. And then we're going to do show matching on the true. And I'm just right clicking or two finger clicking if you're on a Mac like myself. So it looks like we have three here that are active. Okay, oh, retroactive start is true. We don't want that. We want active is true. All right. So now we should have four. Fantastic. And we'll take a look at each one of these in just a second. One thing I want to note is that uh, I am in a domain separated environment. So therefore, I've added the domain field to this list. And I talked about in some of the other videos that I have here. Um, about domain separation that you know when you implement domain separation it's basically implementing like these separate containers or buckets um, that we can easily or sometimes frustratingly use to um, segregate information just another layer of security so to speak um, another thing I could add to this list if I wanted to now that we have we have our definitions here I could also add um, in addition to domain something called overrides and overrides I'll talk about probably in a future video but basically what overrides does is it overrides another domain at a higher level so we'll, we'll talk about that um, in another video on how to implement overrides and also how to get rid of them when we implement overrides by accident so moving on with it um, We'll take a look at our four definitions here. So here we're looking at the created to assign and we're saying, okay, we're giving it 10 minutes uh, for this thing to be assigned this ticket. And we're saying fire active is true. There's no pause condition. Our stop condition is basically assignment time is not empty. I created a, a custom field called assignment time because uh, it's something that I wanted to track instead of um, using the assigned to or assignment group fields. So basically it, it, pushes in, or this is a date time field, and it will push a date time uh, when the uh, assignment group is filled out on the form. And I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so now we have another one. This is assignment time to close. So basically our start condition is um, root cause is not empty. Now you're probably saying, well, hold on here, Jason. You got root cause not empty as your start condition. Yeah, I know that. That's, that's when it's going to fire. However, See our retroactive start here? Assignment time will be filled in by that point. So basically what I'm saying is here that, yeah, I don't want it to trigger until root cause is filled in, but it's still going to track the assignment time against this stop condition. Active is false, so when it's closed. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. And then I did one here, uh, open to assigned. And one thing that we need to note here is the difference between created and opened. So when we look at um, our problems, right? We got a problem dot list. We'll notice here that our opened is before the created, and what this means is when we open up the screen and we click on new, your opened will be filled out. See that created still hasn't been filled out yet, and neither has assignment time. So when I'm using uh, assignment time, or whenever you use retroactive start. You're going to want to make sure that when this start condition fires, that this set start to has been filled out, meaning that it's populated. If it's not populated, the system's not going to know um, where you know you're pulling from. Basically, it's going to say, "Okay, it's blank, so let me go ahead and use something else." 
And you know what? Maybe I'll switch this later on after and we can see the difference there. So let's see here. Now we got open to assigned. Uh, star condition is, you know, basically here we don't have any retro. So guess what? It's probably going to be going out off of the created date is my guess. And then we get, got, have here the same stop condition. And then lastly, we have your ho open to assigned retro start. So see how we have our set start opened. And this list right here, this will only appear, the set start two, when you click on retroactive start. And you also have retroactive pause as an option too, but I'll, I'll go over that in a separate video. But these are all date time fields. You can't do it with the date field. It's gotta be a date time field. Um, and don't worry about this retroactive stop. That's just something I've been working on. And we have your assignment time is not empty. Great. So now here's a new record. Now I'm going to hit save. And when I do that, watch created. Hit save. Boom. Okay, so here we have about an eight, diff eight minute difference between these two. We'll notice assignment time hasn't been filled out yet. So now we have three here. Now look at this, retro start is using that 1627, the earlier one, but the open to assign is using the created date. Why is it using the created date? Well, because we didn't define the retroactive start to use opened um, as our start time. So it's just basically saying, okay, whenever that condition was met, meaning active is true, was the same thing as it using the created date. So that that's because our start condition was active is true. And then we have here created to assigned. Okay, fine. So now let's go ahead and assign this thing to a group. Assign to Aspen now. And now we'll see this assignment time fills in, right? 1636. All three of these have closed. Now look at that. Um, because we used retro here, you know, you have to be aware of that, right? Our actual elapsed and business elapsed percentage. Um, nearly went over. So when you're using retro, it can make a difference between your SLA success percentage um, results. So just make sure you're cognizant of that. So now I'm going to fill in root cause. And we'll put that in. And our assignment time was what? 1636. So let's see here. We have this one assignment time, right? 1636. Good. And now we want to close it to meet that stop condition, right? So we're going to set the close resolved. We'll hit save. And voila, it looks like, yep, came in there. And 1636, 1637 is when it stopped. So good. And so let's go ahead and change it. Um, so let's take a look here. So assignment time to close. So let's try, um, let's try doing active is true. And we'll see that this doesn't work. It won't use assignment time, even though we have it as retroactive start. So, and you're probably gonna say, well, why, why does that happen? Well, we'll see in just a second. So let's go to our problem. We'll go to, oh, this hasn't been created yet, great. We'll hit save. Now, all four should fire, right? Now, I didn't change the name of it, but uh, we'll see your assignment time to close. Well, look, it used 1638.20. Why did it do that? Well, it did that because, guess what? Assignment time's not filled out. So now we're going to fill out assignment group. We'll hit save. Now, assignment time has been filled out. Let's see if our SLA definition updated here. 1638.20, um, looks like for all three of these still, but this is 1638.44, so it doesn't look like it's updating it. Now let's go ahead and close. And it looks like just looking at instance behavior here, uh, yeah, it didn't, it didn't update this thing. So, six, so just make sure that you're cognizant of that when you're implementing the, uh, the retroactive start condition. Okay, well that's our little lesson for today on the retroactive start condition. My name is Jason Miller, founder of AspenNow Solutions, and we've just unlocked the power of ServiceNow.